For the last few years, we've all been acutely aware of how important it is to include foods in our diet that help us fight off viruses. And in this video, Dr. Michael Greger is going to share some exciting research on two foods that have shown some remarkable benefits. Research has found that the components of berries may inhibit replication of the influenza virus, both directly and indirectly. Not only can they block the surface glycoproteins of influenza virus, they also stimulate the immune system. The researchers of this review concluded berries have the potential to prevent and control the influenza virus. They're categorized by multi-directional antiviral activity. In contrast to drugs, their activity is not reduced by changes in the virus structure mutations. The therapeutic effect of berries against influenza results from their direct influence on the virus, modulation of the immune system, reduction of oxidative stress associated with the disease, and their antimicrobial effect on respiratory pathogens. So now let's hear from Dr. Greger of nutritionfacts.org. There are indeed foods that have been found to decrease viral replication. Now, it's possible that it actually isn't an effect on the virus itself, but rather on our immune system, boosting our immune system such that but the end result is lower viral load and viral symptoms. So, for example, broccoli sprouts is kind of the classic example with influenza virus. You can drip flu into people's nose and have them eat broccoli sprouts and get significantly lower viral load, significantly less virus-induced inflammation. And you think it's that sulforaphane, that wonderful crucifer vegetable compound. One of the reasons why my daily dozen cruciferous vegetables every day, not just vegetables every day, but specifically cruciferous vegetables, which is kale, collards, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, etc. Okay. Another one specifically for um, the herpes viruses is uh, seaweed used to make seaweed salad. Wakame. That's one of the reasons I put it in my soups is uh, because of its antiviral properties. Again, it may not be an antiviral property. It may actually be an immune boosting property, but the end result is an antiviral property, whether it's attacking the virus directly or helping us deal with it. So uh, if you're interested, you can type in Wakame, W-A-K-A-M-E, or Epstein-Barr into nutritionfacts.org and that video will pop right up. This study Dr. Greger mentioned is quite remarkable. The researchers gave participants who were suffering from various herpes infections about two grams a day of pure powdered Wakame which is equivalent to about a quarter cup of seaweed salad. And they found that all 15 patients with active herpetic viral infections experienced significant lessening or disappearance of symptoms. This included herpes virus 1, the cause of oral herpes, which causes cold sores, herpes virus 2, which causes genital herpes, herpes virus 4, also known as Epstein-Barr virus, which causes mono, and herpes 3, which causes shingles and chickenpox. However, there was no control group. It's important to note that wakame is a good source of iodine, with roughly an average of about 42 micrograms per gram. Research suggests that iodine intake for adults should be 150 micrograms per day. Taking in too much iodine can be dangerous and lead to iodine toxicity, so do be careful to not overdo it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up Leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.